open our Bibles to the letter to the Ephesians. Uh, I'd like to just appreciate you for your prayers. I had uh, 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 surgery on my leg. I was able to get out of the hospital alive, and I'm on the way to recovery. Uh, thank you very much for your prayers, and I'm, I'm thankful to God for the many ways he's uh, provided and uh, lavished me with his love. Okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, we will do verse 1 to verse 10. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all the things in heaven and under, on earth under Christ. Lord, we pray that your word will, become, uh, will be alive in our hearts, to cause us to be a people that celebrate your blessings in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Paul begins his letter with a typical introduction of the letters of the day. When we write letters in today, we usually put our, our, our name at the, at the bottom, at the end of the letter. But in this day, the letters began by introducing the person who was writing the letter. And so he begins by calling him, uh, by saying, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. See, of course, an apostle is a disciple of Jesus Christ that specifically was called by Jesus in part. When Jesus began his earthly ministry, he called 12 men to follow and learn from him. We read in Acts chapter 1, verse 22, as they were choosing somebody to replace Judas, they had a, a, a list, a sort of a, 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 a qualification of who would qualify to be one of the apostles. And they said that, uh, uh, that therefore, uh, it is necessary to choose of, of, of the men who had been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning with John's baptism to the time Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Now, uh, the, 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 the choice of the, uh, of the person to replace Judas had to fit the fact that one of these had been a witness of the resurrection, had been with them from the beginning. Of course, we know that the Apostle Paul does not fit this description. But he tells us that he's a, a one who has a unique place among the apostles. He tells us, for instance, in Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, he introduces himself with these words, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, Paul's encounter with the resurrected Christ, served as a basis for him to claim to be an apostle. Uh, to the Gentiles, as we read again in Romans chapter 11, uh, verse 13. So Paul sees himself by, as an apostle by the will of God. Now, he sees his calling to ministry as something that happened even before the foundation of the world. You read in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, that, but when God, who set me apart from the mother's womb, called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Now, I found this very challenging. That the Apostle Paul sees his calling to ministry 
as something that happened before the, before the foundation of the world. He was set apart even before he was born. Child of God, I don't know whether this is how you see yourself. I don't know whether you see that the, the way God has gifted you and brought you part, made you part of the body of Christ is not just an accident. It's not just that you have, you're just a nice guy. Or it's just because you come from a nice family. I, I, hope, I don't know whether you know that you're calling to the minister to be part of what God's doing in the church happened even before you were born. That your calling is that serious. I found this very challenging. He set you apart even before you were convinced. Con uh, conceived. For me, this means at least two things. One, it means accountability in the way you, you and I use our gifts. That our accountability for our gifts and the role that God has placed on us in is to, first of all, to God who called us. Sometimes, when we get a little uncomfortable in the ministry, in the church, and maybe people say one thing or the other that discourages us, we're quick to throw in the towel. But sometimes that is because we're not looking at who called us. Sometimes it's because we're looking at men. The second thing that this tells me is that your enablement for ministry is from God himself. You, serve, you can serve in your giftings boldly because it is God who called you. You can serve faithfully because ultimately you are accountable to God. It is God who has gifted you for the role, roles you play in the body. I find that is challenging. The letter is addressed to God's holy people. The King James addresses them as saints. Now, of, of, some of us come from church traditions where we only think about saints as people who are dead, who are canonized or declared saints after they have been dead for some time. But Paul is using this word to talk about a people that are alive, a people that have been set aside, who had been declared holy by God. You see why this is possible is because our declaration of sainthood, of holiness, is not dependent on our performance. It is dependent on what Jesus did at the cross. We can see ourselves as a people who are saved, who are holy, who, are, who have boldness to come in the presence of God, not because of our performance, but because of what Christ did on the cross that declares us righteous. It is interesting that Paul begins the letter by talking about grace because really for us to be declared holy is simply an act of grace. Because look at yourself. Think about you. Think about some of the thoughts that wander through your mind. Think about some of the choices you have made through life. You are not fit. I am not fit except for the grace of God. It is therefore interesting that the Apostle Paul begins by saying grace to you. Now, what is really interesting is actually you read most of the Apostle Paul's letters and they begin with grace to you. As if as you listen, as you read this letter, let God's grace help you to appreciate who you are and what you have become and, who you, and your privileges in Christ. And then most of Paul's letters, as he comes to the close... He says, grace be with you. Yes, grace to appreciate all that God has done. But grace to go with you in life on Monday through Sunday to live out what God has called you and I to. 
verse 3 opens with a list of there's so many ways God has blessed every believer. He says, praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us to the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Please note that Paul's emphasis is of God's blessing and spiritual blessings. Whereas there's a lot of emphasis in the Old Covenant of a God who was going to give people physical blessings, he takes it them a very specific land. He will take them to a land. And he promises them if they live in obedience to him, he will provide for them. Their, their, their land will produce, the, they will eat the good of the land, very uh, focus on, on physical blessings. The Apostle Paul here is calling us to appreciate that God has given us spiritual blessings. And sometimes we want to play the old covenant blessings as if they were part of the new covenant blessings. And put a lot of emphasis on the physical blessings which were very much a part of the old covenant that not necessarily the emphasis of the new covenant. And so we get frustrated when people like me uh, who are, are having to use clutches are told by his stripes you are healed and yet I have to hold a clutch. It is, we, we, we get frustrated when we don't see that happening because we often misunderstand the emphasis of the new covenant is, is spiritual blessings. Yes, God will hear our prayer about our physical needs. Yes, he asks us to have no anxiety about anything. But in everything with prayer and supplication to make our requests made known to him. Yes, we come to him with our physical needs. Yes, it's part of the agenda. But the emphasis here is that God promises us spiritual blessings. Now, he begins by telling us that one of our blessings is one of a special relationship. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in according with his pleasure and will. The promise is a, is a special relationship where we are called children of God, where we become sons and daughters of God. I want you to notice that he says he chose us in him. Before the creation of the world. Your salvation. Made available in Christ. Your being drawn by the Holy Spirit. One day to when you realize you needed Jesus Christ. Was, could have happened for you. As a last minute thought. But in heaven it wasn't a last minute thought. It happened before the creation of the world, God said, you are going to be mine. Please look at your neighbor. Remind them that before the world was created, God said, you're going to be mine. So you see, it, we have a relationship that is secure. It's a place of security because it is not an afterthought for God. It is intention and intentional choice and the choice of you by name. Not just a Muganda girl in Nakulabi or an Acholi in Gulu or a Muzungu from America. No, you by name. It is in him before the creation of the world. The second is that it's through him. It says that your redemption, your choice, your being adopted as a child of God happened through Jesus Christ. Why? Because you see, in Christ, two things happen, come together. The justice of God 
and the mercy of God meet at the cross. There was no way with all your limitations and your failures would you be fit for the kingdom of God. You would be fit to be called a child of God. But God loved you. His judgment condemned you. You see, we were not, by the way, we were not adopted as nice guys. Usually when you think about adoption, you think about, oh, this little baby, oh, this, you, 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 you have those feelings. But you were not adopted with those feelings. You were a rebel. But you see, at the cross, the love of God and the justice of God meet. And so you can be adopted as a child of God. Amen? Amina. And then he says, it is in him, through him, and unto him, you, were, uh, you and I were adopted for his glory. You must ask yourself, is my, my, my heart fixed on giving God the glory? Because your adoption into into sonship is not about you. It is about him. <laughs> you see, I was thinking this week, for all of us, if we start telling people to give us praise, to recognize our achievements, to recognize how nice we are, it is, it is egotistical, it is it is wrong. It is pride. But God does expect us to acknowledge his excellences, his greatness, his goodness. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. To be a people set aside for him. And that special relationship calls us to a standard to be holy and blameless. A people set apart to live our lives to bring him honor and glory. I just want you to, to appreciate as we, we wind up that this is a privileged relationship to be called a son or a daughter of God. But it does come with responsibility. I guess for me, the clear illustration for me was my father. I grew up as a son of James Sekulia uh, in Bukuya, in, uh, in, 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 in the area called Bukuya. And my father had many children, but for some reason, all the children looked like him. You could spot James's children a mile away. And yet he was a very popular man uh, in this whole sub-county. So everywhere you went, you could be spotted out. As a little boy, you knew that if you misbehaved, somebody would know who has misbehaved. So it was a sort of a double-edged sword. On one hand, there was something exciting about being, having a father who had a name. A name that would be quickly recognized. There's something special about that. But there's also the accountability that came with it. You could not go unnoticed. And this is the privilege that is, that is ours in Christ. We belong to the King of Kings. We have our Heavenly Father. We are His daughters. We are His sons. But guess what? We are also a marked people. And we have a responsibility to bring him honor and praise. I pray that this week you will celebrate this unique place of, 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 that God has given you as a child and a, 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 as a son and a daughter of our Heavenly Father, but that you would honor him with your life. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Just thankful that we are a people who are called your children. And in you we have confidence to walk into any, any challenge because you walk with us. You are by our side. We are your sons. 
we are your daughters. Lord, help us this week to honor you with our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.